他の誰かを期待したかい ?Yoji, indeed, had not imagined that his savior would turn out to be Dr. Tanbao Ryoko. I mean, she was the only one you told about where you were going. Well, where you were, rather. Of course, it took him a moment to recognize her. Instead of a white gown and tight skirt, she is wearing a heavy leather coat, denim jeans, and boots with no heel. She must have expected a hike through the mountains. Her light is blocky, all purpose type, featuring side mounted fluorescent runners in addition to the main floodlight. s p a r k l gear and professional grade by the look of it. Dr. Sama says, and dryly as she gives Koji a once over. She pulls a flask out of her pocket and hands it to him. No, me, come as you could eat toxic to no matter you only shiro. Scotia, a machine in order. Ah, are you to go? I must. She walks around with a flask. Maybe Koji's just old fashioned, but it doesn't seem proper for a young woman, a doctor at that. Nevertheless, he unscrews the cap and takes a swig and struggles to keep from coughing as the potent liquid sears his tongue. No, no, this is not. Spiritus Wokka. Kitske Gusri ni Yoshi, Shodok ni Yoshi. Abisete kara hi o tskereba kiku yo na aite ni wa kanari kiku. That face. I don't know why. It's just me. She have a. She vaguely kind of reminds me of Laura Croft a bit here. Her tone is. And I mean like the original version, you know, in the PS1 games. Tone is straightforward and quite serious. Koji can only gape at the doctor, the dark smile on her face, doing little to ease his confusion. Is this really Dr. Tanbo? There's no trace of the bookish, mild mannered woman Koji met at hospital. Her expression is now set in a hard mask. Her eyes are sharp and wary. In the darkness at the bottom of the well, it is possible, however unlikely, that the change in her features is due to the ominous shadows cast by her lamp. It's not so easy, however, to explain the change in her inner. Don't tell me she's gonna turn out to be a bad, bad person, too. Erko replies brusquely, glaring at Koji like an annoyed professor. Koji still doesn't understand why she acted so quickly, but it's a different part of what she just said that he seizes his attention. したよ。君と一緒でつながらない。正直なところ、私はてっきり君も死体になってるもんだと思ってたんだがね。つらい、ヤンバスダイドになった、ハンズのマンにフォートは自分の人生。アングルとフラストレーションは全部、彼女は自分の人生。彼女は自分の人生を許す。彼女は自分の人生を許す。彼女は自分の人生を許す。彼女は自分の人生を許す。彼女は自分の人生を許す。Tried to kill Koji. Could he have done the same to her? Nah, much worse. Ma, ochitsuke. Koko de kimi ga ikura sakki datte mita tokoro de hajimara. Turn, Ryoko says, hurriedly turning away to examine the inside of the well. Nani ka atta to omotta no nara. Keisatsu ni wa todoke de kureta ndesu ka? Koji says to her back. Keisatsu da to? Still engrossed in her ex examination of the walls, Kuroko laughed scornfully at the idea. So, Kimi was still so you cut at the killing at Skira Little Mono that all what the Ruake. Do you mean this? Annoyed by her condescending attitude, Koji is better than answers when she cuts him off with a gesture and shines a light at a corner of the well. Tonoku, Koizu ni wa kizuka na katta no ka? Huh? In the light of the lamp, Koji sees that some of the stones are a different shade than the rest of the wall. This must be what Ryoko was looking for. <laughs> Ryoko's gaze moves slowly along the wall, finally coming to rest on a gap between two of the stones. The hole is just wide enough for an adult to reach into open handed. <laughs> Erika says with a grim smile. She wastes no time thrusting her hand into the opening. After she feels around for a few seconds, Koji hears the funk of something solid coming together behind the wall. Sensei. 
Becca pulls her hand out and gives the different colored stone a gentle push. With the rumble of weight shifting, the stone slides smoothly back into the wall. Ah, she's been on a guy's trail for a while and from the sounds of it. <laughs> Koji once answers, but Ryoko ignores him and peers into the opening. The beams of her floodlight, Koji can see a concrete tunnel leading into the mountain. The warning is utterly devoid of warmth. Considering his options, Koji looks from the tunnel to the rope and back again. He's practically sweating now thanks to the 190 proof vodka he just drank. But although feeling has returned to his fingers, he still doesn't have the strength to climb. That said, the thought of being alone in a well again makes him shiver. <laughs> Rego steps into the tunnel without looking back and Koji doesn't hesitate to follow. It's gonna be a long editing session. It's gonna take freaking ages editing all of this record session, man. This is the longest one so far. I mean, granted, it's only been two hour record session for this. It's gonna get longer with each one. Probably not. I don't know. Koji says sarcastically, following Ryoko as she moves cautiously down the tunnel with her light leading the way. Rekka suddenly stops and stares at the floor. When Koji looks over her shoulder, he sees a dust covered rope lying coiled up in the middle of the pipe. Rekka picks up the rope, examines it, and hands it to Koji.長さは私が使ったロープのほぼ2倍。途中に結び目があって、Rekka shines her light down the tunnel, revealing that it is an end in a closed wooden door about 10 meters ahead. こうやってここに逃げ込んだ奴は追って飲めを食らませたのさ。やられたよ。まんまと騙された。先生、さっき前にも来たっていうのは。ああ、君はさきさかくんだけじゃない。私も先生。王外を追ってこの別荘に来た
これから私がやることは一切合切君とその友達が足を突っ込んでる泥沼のありさまを終わらせてやるための手続きだ you know what I imagine everyone is probably gonna get killed off but can you imagine a series where Dr. Tarnbo you know hunts down eldritch abominations that would be interesting <laughs> その辺をよく理解して余計な口は突っ込まないこといいね She must know about Sire then. Maybe not like the full picture, but probably knows about her existence of, in some way from Dr. Agai. Because she clearly has had a run in with him before. Koji can only nod weakly in response. With the light in her left hand and a shotgun in her right, Ryoko walks up to the door and takes a deep breath. Then she kicks the door open, putting her full weight behind the blow. With a disappointingly feeble sound, the door breaks off its hinges and falls into the room. Dust billows like white smoke in the beam of Ryoko's light. The room is large, at least 35 meters square. The tiled floor is set with drainage grates, and there's no mistake in the operating table sitting in the middle of the room. Cabinets full of. And at the moment, where and drugs lie in one side of the space, and against the opposite wall. Stand a writing desk and bookshelves. Those things Koji recognizes mysterious objects cluttering the table, tables and shelves, however, are beyond his comprehension. Mirrors delicately engraved with complex patterns, grotesque statues and masks that might have been left by a race of savages. The tapestries woven in nauseating arrays of color, crystal ball the size of an infant's head. Any would fetch a hefty price at an antique store. Not for the one thing they all have in common. Every last piece is so loathsome and foul that Koji feels sick just looking at it. So, so each was designed for the sole sinister purpose of immortalizing its creator's hatred of the world. I'm starting to wonder if maybe Sire was some crazed experiment. Could be. Rare looking books of the sort that he found in our guise. How m a r piled here and there, and on the shelf are stacked some scrolls that look to be made of some kind of sheepskin or papyrus, whatever it is, it's not paper. Finally, there are the indes- indecipherable chalk patterns and symbols filling every available space on the walls. Even the two s l i g h t blackboards are covered in strange, unreadable scribblings. Just looking at them is making Koji dizzy. r e k a snaps at him. いいかここから動くな絶対に何かに触ったりするな目を引くようなものがあっても見つめたりしちゃいけない Man, it really feels like it could be like a spin-off series of novels where Dr. Tanbo goes hunting down Eldrick Abominations but unfortunately I don't think that's gonna be the case here because it's probably gonna get killed off with the rest of them I'd imagine but that would be so interesting Because she clearly has an understanding, it's like, no, don't look at that shit. If you never read a Lovecraftian horror, you don't look at the stuff, it will drive you mad. まずいと思ったらすぐに目をそらして自分の靴を見ろ。わかった。Rekka switches her lights, f l u r s e n d runners on, and sets it on a nearby table where it can illuminate the whole room. She then holsters her shotgun only to pull out an even more. Confusing set of tools, digital camera, and a can of spray paints. She gives the can in her left hand a good shake, switches the camera in her la-、uh, right hand, and steps up to the blackboard while looking at the camera's side mounted screen. Through recording one set of symbols, she covers it with a thick layer of paint and moves on to the next. Ano, Sensei! Lesson 1. Miona Zuke, a Latin Gono Bunshow to Kawa, Zetai ni Yomuna, Mitsumeruna. 機械の目で記録しておいて後で注意深く調べればいい現物はその場で塗りつぶすか何かして破壊しろ Seriously man, it feels like a missed opportunity here She seems like an interesting character here She s like she knows her shit She's like you got to do with elder abominations this way You can't be like looking at the madness It will drive you insane You gotta glance down You gotta look away Don't look at what you see ahead It will drive you mad. I guess she's kind of the character that, you know, would be like the detective kind of character, you know? The one that kind of, you know. But she seems more knowledgeable than the average detective in a Lovecraftian horror story. 
And as she mentioned it, Koji realized that she's only looking at the screen of her camera even then, only in short glimpses and never directly at any of the drawings. I understand what she's saying, but it still doesn't make any sense. あと、水晶球とか鏡の類いも危ない。下手に壊すとヤブヘビになったりするから、とりあえず布でもかぶせるか、ペンキを浴びせて封印しろ。Kyoji begins to fear that this doctor might be even crazy than Fuminori. Now, I think she just knows how crazy this whole thing is. Despite the burst of energy received from the vodka, Koji is still exhausted from his night in the well. Spheres affecting his body, making him dizzy and nauseous. Soon the walls are covered in black paint and the uh, stale air is thick with the smell of turpentine. Kyoji says with relief then tosses the empty can aside and puts away her video camera. Koji has supporting himself against a nearby table. Without stopping her examination of the papers on the writing table, Rika points not only to Chinese-style screen standing in one corner of the room. He was there. The clinical choice of tense makes her meaning instantly obvious. He has to see for himself is irresistible. Koji staggers across the room to the screen, taking the utmost care not to look at the scaly octopus things that he's painted on it. It's always bloody tentacles with Lovecraft in horror, isn't it? Behind the screen is a large easy chair. Although he's never met the man before, Koji is fairly certain that the person sitting in it is a guy, Masahiko. Yep, he's dead. Called it. The guy's corpse must have shrunk significantly while drying in this sealed chamber. But he's barely the size of a child. Only the uh, business suit hanging from the bones offering any hint of our guy's former stature. So he looks like he's been dead for a good while, so how did he die? And Saya was looking for him as well, so he must have died away from her. Somehow. His empty eye sockets and wide open jaw are filled with darkness, the same darkness that turned that surrounded Koji at the bottom of the well. Compared to those gaping voids, the tiny hole in our guy's right temple is almost demi-demi-blah. Rather that he presumably used to kill himself out, oh, there we go. He's still clenched in his dangling right hand. It looks like a child's toy compared to Ryoko's shotgun. Ryoko must have noticed our guy's corpse while she was spray painting the walls. And still she kept without working without his batting an eyelid flash. Impressive, and not exactly surprising after what he's been through. It's getting difficult to remember the last time he spoke to someone sane. If not for her, Koji reminds himself with a bit of a smirk. He would have ended up joining this mummified corpse here, and no one would have ever found him. Koji's vision suddenly dims. He's pushed himself too hard, and the... vodka can't help him anymore. Clapped to the floor, unable to hang on to his slipping consciousness, and the last thing he sees are a guy, Mashiko's gaping eyes like it's staring at him. So obviously this old guy person is clearly responsible for uh, how Saya is, you know. I mean, maybe she just like appeared on somewhere and he found her. He either found her or created her. Pro possibly found her, I feel I'm molding towards. And he tried like studying and all that, trying to like do whatever and shit. And then like... Uh, when Tanbo got on to that, he's like, wait, I gotta stop you, and then he was able to flee, and she's like, shit, if only I had this shotgun at Tanbo to stop that motherfucker, and none of this would have happened. When he wakes, Koji finds himself lying on something dry and soft. A bed is a bed, he thinks to himself, even one that smells of mold and dust, and especially after sleeping in cold mud all night. There are no lights hanging from the ceiling, but the soft, warm light of a lamp fills the room. Simple furnishings. Non-existent decor, Koji recognizes that he's in Ogai's cabin, in the bedroom that he searched before Fuminori pushed him into the well. And Tanbo must have some real strength to have gotten him up there. Is that a sandwich? Where'd you get a sandwich from? I guess she must have just brought, brought it on her uh, journey here. 
Look her sitting in a chair against the wall, her expression a, 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 a blank as she studies the pile of documents on the table in front of her. How long is this scene gonna go on for this? Second bit of recording is gonna be 31 minutes. It's nearly 9 p.m. I gotta be uploading in the next hour, man. Look her sitting in a chair against the wall, her expression blank as she studies the pile of documents in front of her. She must have brought them up from a guy's underground lab. She turns the page and takes a bite from the sandwich in her free hand. Without looking up from the file, she gestures towards the convenience store bag sitting on the nightstand. Kyoji can't imagine that a woman, even a woman like Ryoku, could have climbed out of the well with him on her back. It probably led to a secret entrance into the cabin, didn't it? Yep. Ryoku mutters, taking care not to let the explanation interfere with her reading or eating. I mean, he was the one that, like, he looked, he checked the basement and didn't find anything there, but it was actually a secret passage. そこまでして隠さなきゃならないものがあの部屋にあったんですか。昔はね、それにさっきまでも。Having finished her sandwich, Ryoko picks up some unsorted papers with her free hand and waves them in the air. 世界中の研究者が誰もかも学会で演壇に登ってリサイタルをやりたがるわけじゃないのさ。自分一人が秘密に通じて。Koji still hasn't the slightest idea what our guy's secret might have been. From what Ryoko said in that tunnel, however, he can guess that Fuminori is somehow involved. Koji asks desperately, no longer caring who he gets answers from. Ryoko replies coldly as though Koji's concerns are none of hers. Ryoko's。私が先坂君から聞いたところによると、彼は王外の親族から調査を頼まれているという話だった。ええ、それは俺も聞いてます。うん、そうか、一貫してるんだな。Rekka pulls several sheets of loose leaf paper from a different file. だが、王外に血縁者はいない。私は、崎坂君が嘘をついているものとばかり思っていた。だが、もう一つの可能性を考えるべきだった。彼は、王外の親族を名乗る何者かに、そそのかされていたのかもしれない。ここら辺りは。Oh、she she sighs bitterly, then returns her attention to the papers in her hand. So, our guy must have been in a similar position to uh, Fuminori, probably. Originally, he was trying to understand and help Sire. And something happened, and uh, he shot himself, I guess. Or maybe, maybe, I don't know, but then where was Sire in all this? Because she was looking for him this whole time. So she mustn't have known that he died, so... It's mysterious. If you are already familiar with Sire, you can go ahead and get him out of You got that right. Take that double barrel shotgun and shoot him. He actually said Dean Rucker's word sends a chill down Koji's spine. He has to ask even though he already knows the answer. さっきも言ったよね。1年前の私も手元に銃を持ってればってどれだけ後悔したか知れないんだ。Rucker 
ラクタズのスポンドザシダズンイヴンヒアワットカウチジスセイ。ミノリがやったことは殺人未遂です。俺が訴えればあいつは犯罪者として。カウチ不条理な物事について、きちんと条理に沿った体裁を整える。彼らの思考はいつだって、より理解しやすい方、より説明しやすい方に傾いていく。それこそ、水が低い方へ低い方へと流れていくように、事実がどうあろうと彼らには興味
東京に戻ってきなさい忘れろと近江は俺の恋人でした文則は俺の親友でしたそれを忘れろとそうだ忘れろこれは提案じゃない警告だ今まではどうであれこれからの君の人生にその二人は一切関わりを持たないだろう断言してもいいじゃあつくばは教授シャーツ unable to control himself 彼女はどうなるあの子は電話口で俺に助けを求めてたどこかでひどい目に遭わされてたんだそりゃ何十時間前の話かねな私が君を助けてから何時間経ったと思うそうでなければ井戸の中の君があと何時間持ったと思う She shakes her head. The class c o l d l y I'm not sure what I'm doing. I mean, she's in a worse state than dead, honestly. Koji growls, unable to suppress his anger. Nope, she wouldn't. She probably would be like, oh, there's that secret passage. What a crafty bastard. Oh, look, dead body, who cares? So, y e a h Kakumo s t e t a k a r a n e Masaka i k i t e r to a Omana Katayo. Rekka says we're shrug and faced by Koji's ire. <laughs> Just fatal to argue with this woman, Koji realizes. Her values are fundamentally different from his own. Nothing he can say will ever move her. She's, you know, cold, but. Not the same kind of cold as Fuminori has become. She's definitely, you know,、uh, got a cold personality. She just wants to, you know, right the wrong that, you know, she wasn't able to stop a guy back when all this could have been resolved earlier on. So she's out on a mission to, you know, put a stop to it once and for all. And then she's not really cares much about anyone else that gets in the way of that mission of hers. Koji gets out of bed and stands on shaky legs. Donokurai, or one netted on this. That to Hanni Chibakari. Show more start to Smiakani Kusoka Torelute no Uriamashine. Wakayu Chidakedayo. How old is she anyway? Koji looks at his watch and sees that it's four in the morning, which means that it was already early morning when Rekko re- rescued him. Can't believe that he survived that well for almost two days. Now that the gaps in his memories have been filled and his sense of time has returned, he realizes it's already Sunday morning. Ryoko is right. A lot of time has passed since he spoke to Yo on the phone. Koji grabs a sports drink and two jelly packs from the bag of food that Ryoko brought and heads for the door. His legs are still a little unsteady, but he can compensate for that with sheer willpower. Koji replies brusquely, his tone as hard as hers. Tsukuba Yo are mother Mania Kamoshirena. Kanojo Taskenikimas. Kito no Hanashi or Kikana Yatsudane, Kimiwa. Kikumi Motana no Otagai Sama de Show. Koji expecting Ryoga to watch him go with that cold, mocking smile of hers. Said, however, she sighs heavily and rests her jaw in, his hand, in her hands. Mosko Shimatsuki Wanaika. Koitsu no Dokokani. She thrusts her chin at the man with the paper in front of her. Oh, I got Sayato Nazuketa Monoga Nanda Tanoka. Kotaina Kaksarete Hazda. So it's all Tsukitomete. Chanto Taisako Kojitekara Ungoku Beki Dato Watashiwa Mo. Tsukuba got Shinder to Kimete Kakater Antanara. Tozen so Mo de Shone. Truth Coach is extremely uneasy about going in alone. I mean, if he does manage to, you know, find her. She's basically been turned into an Eldrick abomination. He wouldn't be able to recognize her. At the same time, however, he knows that he mustn't depend on Ryoko. She's made it clear that she doesn't care about saving lives. The Team Up with her will only make it more difficult to salvage something, anything, out of his nightmare. Now, teaming with her would be the best course of action, which is why you're not gonna go for that. Tonoku. Ryoko calls just before Koji steps at the door. Kari ni mo ichido wa korosare kakatte runda. もう二度と殺されるな 
She picks something up from the table and tosses it to Kochi. And Kochi catch it if he feels a solid weight fill his hand. <laughs> Kochi stares at the menacing shape of cold metal. It's a revolver, the same one that was clenched in a guy's skeletal fists. <laughs> If Koji were his usual cautious self, he would not hesitate to reject the dangerous offering. The only time you truly need a gun is when all hope is lost. You'd prefer not to fight a losing war. And yet, without even knowing it, Koji has already set foot into Ryoko's world. Choose an instinct of a reason, he accepts a small but deadly weapon and stuffs it into his pockets. There's no question that Koji intends to save Yo and bring Fuminori to answer for his crimes. In the back of his mind, however, he can hear the footsteps of Ruin approaching. Yeah, it's, it's a crapshoot, man, you're fucked, one way or the other. When he steps out of the cabin's front door, Koji shivers as the wind tears into his skin. To his surprise, the outside air is even colder than the mud at the bottom of the well. Perhaps the crumbled space mitigated the cold somewhat. If he had been exposed to this chill all night long, he would surely have frozen to death. Koji finds two cars parked in the yard. A smaller car next to his must be Ryoko's. When he sits behind the wheel of his car, he gets some relief from the feeling that he has taken the first step, however small, back into his world. He sips the sports drink, wetting his parched throat, then washes down some jelly. His stomach rebel rebels at the sudden influx of food after 36 hours on empty, but he managed to force down the urge to vomit. Goju needs the energy, no matter how hard it is, he must regain enough stamina to overcome the challenges ahead. After forcing down as much food as he can handle, Goji leans back in his seat and takes a short break. When he begins to feel like himself again, he reaches into the back seat and pulls his spare cell phone out of his bag. He never expected that carrying two phones would be such a stroke of luck. As he calls up Fuminori's number and prepares to hit Sen, Koji is overcome by a flood of emotions. Rage, despair, sorrow, pity, he is unable to decide what to feel towards his friend. However, there's no time to dwell on his past. On, on the past. He passed. Every second lost diminishes the chance to save an Omi and Yo. Koji refuses to consider that it may already be too late. Yet, yeah, it's, it's way past the point of too late, man. Seals himself and presses the button, then holds the phone to his ear as it rings. Shrill sound seems to go on for longer than it ever has in his life. Right now, Fuminora's phone must be displaying the name of the caller. Koji wonders what his reaction will be when he sees it. <laughs> Call goes through. In the silence on the other end of the phone, Koji senses surprise, apprehension, and dark fury. Feeling slightly gratified, Koji delivers the first jab. Yo, so many guys, Shinin Kara no Denwa wa. Scotch is about to answer, an idea suddenly comes to him. Ido so ni shikake ga atta no sa. Chika no kakushibe ya ni iku tame no na. A plan forming rapidly in his mind. He pauses to let that sink in, and then with satisfaction filling his voice, he says, Ai ta ze, ongai Masahiko to. Fuminora's gaff tells Koji that the advantage is his. Keeping his voice bold, he decides to fail exaggerate the truth. Nani mo kamo wakatta. Saya te yatsu no koto mo zenbu. Oh. Omae tachi wa owari da yo, Fuminori. He has no idea what Saya is, but because, you know, those papers mention Saya, I mean, he hasn't even looked at them. But now mentioning her name, that's gonna really get the Fuminori. Nani mo kamo barashi te yaru. Tokoro kamaazu ni buchimake te yaru. Shouko wa chanto sorotte ru kara na. Kisso. It's obvious from Fuminori's tone that rage has overwhelmed his reason. Koji's bluff is working perfectly. His victory is tainted, however, as Fuminori's response to the name Sire brings a cry of anguish from the corner of his heart, and still wants to believe his friend can be saved. Raku's words play back in his mind, sounding even colder than before. He mustn't allow emotions to sway him. Fuminori. Koji suddenly switches topics, trying to keep Fuminori off balance. It all comes down to this. 
お前の出方次第では考えんでもないお前がこれ以上誰も傷つけないというのなら俺にしたことは忘れてやるこの別荘で見つけたことも俺だってこれ以上お前とさやに関わり合いを持つのは願い下げなんだ近江たちさえ無事に戻ればいい近江とヨーネ From now his voice trails off. He's obviously trying to decide how far Koji can be trusted. And well, there's room for negotiation. For Minori has been called out. Now it's time for him to show his hand. Wait, so does he still not know that it was Omi that Saya killed? For Minori pauses and gives a knowing chuckle that sends chills up Koji's spine. Coach is relieved to learn Yo's location and that she is at least still alive. She's not in the best condition though. Same time, however, he remembers that horrifying phone call. It's clear now that Fuminari played some part in Yo's suffering. Had he already fallen into his trap back then? What has happened to her? How is she being treated? <laughs> Mary says with venom and sarcasm. Koji feels despair, sad lover his soul. How much lower will this man go? Does Fuminori seek out and destroy every memory of the friendship they once shared? He's a piece of shit, fuck him. Put a bullet in his brain. Skuba o kai ho shiro! Kanojo no anzen o kakuni shtara. Omaira ni tsuite no shoko o haki shteru. お前に選択の余地を与えるつもりはないよ、フミノリ。コーチ、インスティンクティブリー・リアライズ・エッツ・デンジャス・トゥ・ポッシュ・ズ・ブラフ・エニ・フェラー。あとでまた連絡する。それまでによく考えておけ。He hangs up without waiting for a response. フミノリ doesn't know that コーチ is still at the cabin in the Gichi. Right now, you're probably worried about whether Koji will show up in one hour or one minute. Koji hopes that he'll be able to take advantage of Fuminori's confusion. Three hours, that's how long it will take to race all the way back to Tokyo. Koji is afraid that his body won't carry him through such a long drive. His mind is clear, but his limbs still feel half asleep, like they're weighted down with lead. Although he knows that he has to say, Resolute Koji still longs for the peace he had just a few days ago, and life or death struggles with the fearless thing from his mind. Honestly, this feels like a bad idea. Sure, he's like, he's probably gonna go straight to their house, and it's not gonna go well. He really should have just stuck with Tanbo. I feel like his chance of survival would have been better there. Or you know, just get the fuck out of this whole scenario and lay low until everything blows over potentially, <laughs> which it probably won't. Yeah, it's very weird, but I remember his mind back then. He could never imagine how fighting to rescue a friend from the clutches of a madman. With each passing moment, he feels himself becoming less like a person he was. When all of this is over, will he be able to、uh, return to his old life? Or will this change continue until it has consumed him utterly? Time is against him. Every second that passes is wasted. Even so, he decides to allow himself just five minutes of peace. For exactly five minutes, he leans against the steering wheel and cries. And when his tears have run dry and his heart is calm, Koji slots up his car and drives away. The car has been close to three hours at this point. Stare at the silent phone in my hands. I think it'll do for this recording because bloody hell. It's like. gone on for ages, man. Yeah, it almost makes it look like the same one because it's the exact same spot. So, end, end in the same kind of、uh, scene going on here. Yeah, I gotta be uploading around this time, man. I got Digimon World Next Order to upload on the main channel. I'm kind of.、Mm, I will edit here because I just know that 
some of those new CGs that have a bit of nudity. Yeah, so I'm just gonna check to see how much CG is left. Okay. Four, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Fourteen CG left, so it can't be too much left. It probably is, though. Probably still a fair bit of plot left. But I'll do for this record session. I was originally gonna, you know, actually I could. Because, you know, in the Higurashi LP, I used to do, you know, the word of the day thing. Let's actually have a word of the day, just for the hell of it. Well, horror isn't really a thing, really, is it? It would just be how it would be in English, wouldn't it? How about we have two? We'll have Hostage, Itochichi, Itochichi, and Horrible, Idoi, which, I know, I've definitely heard that pronounced before. I haven't watched anime in years. But, you know, I imagine anyone who's watched any anime probably is familiar with that phrase, you know. Hidoi. But anyways, that'll do for this record session. I guess the next record session will probably be a month from now because of how these record sessions go. Because there's so much... And this one is even more time on recording, nearly three hours. So it's going to have a bunch of parts. But <laughs> with how... The story just kind of sticks with you. It's not like I'll be like, when I get around to recording next, I'll be like, oh yeah, where did we leave off? It's like, no, I remember where we left off. This fucking story is fucked. Anyways, see you next time, viewers. See you next time.